Hi there, welcome. For those people or who already know about what I'm going to show you, please skip forward and go and check the moulds out that I'm casting. Uh, that's on? Right, okay. This is for the people that are, if you're going to dabble into casting, just a few of the items that you actually need to actually get yourself started. The first thing I'll start with, the most important, is casting powder. Just put that one there. Uh, the first one is a Herculite 2. Now this is a good all-round casting powder. It will do all of your moulds. But saying that, I do use two casting powders, and this is the Crystallite R. This is a porcelain finish plaster, which is extremely hard. I use this for the more delicate pieces like tiles, uh, slates, uh, little things like that. So they're both good quality uh, casting powders. I will put a link in the description uh, where you can actually get these from. Uh, you can actually get these off eBay. But other countries, I don't know what, which country you're, you're in, you might have to find an equivalent to it. Right, that is the main, main thing. That's the most important. I'll stress that now, is to get a good quality casting plaster to cast in rubber silicon moulds. Plaster of Paris is no good. Don't even think about it. Or decoration filler or anything like that. You will not get good results. Right, moving along. What we have is a set of digital scales. The set of digital scales is for measuring weight-wise your casting powder. Most, well, all casting powders will come to either a, a two to one ratio or a three to one ratio, which is one milliliter of water to two grams of casting powder. So you need a set of scales to measure that out accurately. Uh, the next thing, well, well, I'll move these things in because I think a lot of them are out of shape. A spoon, well, the spoon's for fishing up your powder. Nothing too technical about that. There isn't nothing too technical you need. A paintbrush, that is for mixing your plaster and also for painting pigments or paints into your moulds. That's a basic thing. A basic scraper, any shape or size. This is for cleaning off the tops of your moulds. We move along. Mixing containers, these can be yoghurt pots, they can be anything you like, as long as you can mix them. We also have a disposable syringe. This is a 10 mil syringe. Uh, you'll find that most of the moulds, you won't go over 12 mil. Actually, this is it goes up to 12 mil, this one does. They're very cheap to get hold of, and you will get an accurate mix by using something like this. Next to it, we have a, a piece of uh, plastic. This is to actually put your moulds on. So I'll bring the mould down. The moulds are quite flexible and soft. This is just so when you cast, you can cast into your mould and you can actually move it away, put it somewhere safe to dry, because if you pick it up, as you can see, you're going to end up breaking your parts, damaging them, and things like that. Put that mould back in its place. Now, another thing that you need is a plastic container and some rinse age. Now the rinse age aid is for soaking your moulds in before you cast in them. You will do a small amount into their water, put your mould in into it and soak it then partially, partially dry it off before you start casting. The rinse aid helps release, well, it breaks the water tension in the plaster and helps release the air bubbles from the face of the mould so you do get decent parts. Now, uh, colours. There, I've already done, there's two videos out. One on pigments, which is, I use the Vallejo pigments. And there's also one out on paints. 
I use the Vallejo paints. It's just that that's what I have to hand. There's two videos out. The choice is yours on what colours and how you do it. If you're going to do a lot of casting, I would recommend pigments. If it's going to be little bits and pieces and you don't want to buy pigments and you've got paints in your uh, box, you can use paints quite easily and just as good as pigments. So that is your colouring. We move on now. Uh, I have a small vibrating table which I made myself. There is a video out how to actually make this particular vibrating table. It shows you, tells you all the parts that you need, how to do it, everything. If you don't want to build a vibrating table, you can actually get away with using a piece of plastic and getting a piece of foam rubber or sponge, placing it on, tapping it with your finger. That will do just as well. Uh, failing that, you can actually use a compressor. Start your compressor up on your board and just gently lay it on top of the compressor. The vibrations will do exactly the same job as well. So there's three options there if you require to for a vibrating table. Moving on, the final thing, and I will stress this because this has caused quite a few marital breakups, is I'll just move the camera slightly. Is a container to wash up in. Uh, you need a container to wash up in for the simple reason is when you mix the plaster with the water, the water is only a medium to hold the plaster and the plaster will sink and harden under water. So if you wash your cups up, your moulds, that will go down the drain and it will block your sink up straight away. So if you get yourself a largest container that you can actually put stuff, wash stuff up and get it cleaned up. So that's it. So next up is how to cast the moulds. Okay, welcome everybody. I hope you enjoyed the intro. Right, we'll be looking at uh, different moulds. I'm going to go run through, start to finish, how I actually cast each particular mould. Now the first moulds we're going to look at are the cobblestones. Now all three of these moulds are all cast identically. So I'm just showing you them and we'll just cast one. Now uh, the first one we've got is the 6x10 and then we've got the 6x8 and then we've got the 4x8. And strangely, they all take the same amount of uh, casting powder. So what we'll do, we'll put them two up on the shelf. And we'll put that one straight into the rinse aid, which is over there. I hope you can see that I've done that. Now, uh, this particular mould will measure, well, the, the measurements for the uh, casting powder is eight mils of water and 16 grams of uh, casting powder. So, eight water. And we'll go straight in and get 16 grams of casting powder. There we go, 16 grams. And I will say, Try and be quite accurate with your measurements as it does make a difference on the flow rate of the plaster. So that goes into there. You can sprinkle it over. I just dump it in and let it get on with what it should do. <coughs> right, moving on, we've got the mould. Just literally tap the mould off. So it's not actually soaking, but the inside of the mould is still wet onto your plastic sheet. The extra water makes that stick, so it won't go nowhere. By the time you've done that, as you can see, it's ready for use. Now, color-wise, I'll do this one in black. Uh, 
what I do is I pick myself a set of colours and then each casting I do one casting each colour as, as we go through and that way you will get a random selection of colours. Me, one good brush fill, I'm using pigment into it and as you can see we've got a nice grey. So on with the vibrating table and we'll just pour them. Sorry about the children in the background, but uh, I'm surrounded by children. So there we go. Excuse me, I want to do some washing up. draining board. Right, now we just leave that to vibrate for a few minutes. I always run my finger around the edge because that breaks the water and allows the water to trickle off. <coughs> we'll leave that to vibrate for, uh, well actually it's been vibrating long enough really to me, but you can leave it vibrating for minutes, minute. Because I'm impatient, I always give it a little bit of a helping hand. And I can see there's no air coming up to the top of that now. So I'm going to switch that off. Right, I shall put you on pause and we'll come back in a few seconds when I'm ready to skim the top off. Okay, it's been about five, six minutes and the surface is just starting to go off. So what I do is with a scraper, and I'm doing this the wrong handed so you can actually see, is just Flatten the top of the mould off, but you want this just as it's going off. Uh, if it's too wet, it leaves indents. So, that's scraped off. Now what I should do is, that will go off of my bench, up into my rack, and left to dry. And I will come back in a short while when they're dry, and we'll turn them out and see what we've got. Okay, it's been roughly about 16 minutes since I poured these blocks. Now you can get these blocks out pretty fast uh, because you have to actually handle them. Because if you just turn them up that way and squeeze, they will drop out. So if you need to be doing a lot of blocks to just get these out, you can get these out pretty fast. Uh, because you do use a lot of blocks up. But you can get, like I say, you can get them out reasonably quick. Yeah. You can see them. So, they're all perfectly done. There's no problems with them at all. So you can get them out reasonably quick. I would say you can do a mould every 16 minutes and that way I, I mean I was going to buy some more moulds but as I'm here I can do this all day if I want to but uh, I don't really want to but and also the mould is left nice and clean normally what I do is just give it a rub over with my hand make sure there's no big bits on the edges and a quick tap out now I'll put that straight into my release agent again and cast straight away in it uh, you don't need to keep washing them up every time uh, probably after about what eight or nine castings I'll take it in and give it a rinse and a tap and just give it a clean but there we go and if you keep, keep casting them in different colours and keep putting them in the same box, you'll get a nice selection of random colours for when you uh, come to doing your block paving. So, thank you very much for joining me on this, uh, I don't know what to call it actually. Well, this is going to go into the weathering tips and uh, casting tips. 
and I will do a video on every mould. So you've got a reference point to start. So thank you again and uh, we'll see you on the next one.